Hello my beautiful Wulong family, this is Kadima with another video, this time focused on build creation and explaining how you can upgrade your build to deliver more damage focused on not only your favorite weapons, your favorite armor, but how you can combine all these things and level up your character to make the most out of your build potential. This uh, quick guide video will explain not only uh, what you should focus when you are upgrading your character in terms of the virtues, but also how weapon scaling works uh, upgrading your weapon, what it does to the weapon itself, and also the combinations you can think of when you are putting your setup together. So, I created this build yesterday, which I'm growing quite fond of. It's very fun to use, uh, very um, strong as well, not overpowered, that was not the idea for this build. It was just to have a little bit of everything with the build itself so i've made builds in the past that you could say oh your your poison is op and i would agree with that because the build was entirely designed into making the poison and the fire spells for that build become overpowered but that doesn't necessarily mean that using poison is overpowered it's the build that makes the most out of that spell in combination with the fire as well, putting all those spells together and making the most out of it by designing the entire build around it. In this case, what I've done with this build is kind of a balance between all the worlds in Wulong. So this covers not only the amount of damage that you will be doing with your weapon, not only the amount of damage you will be doing with your spell, but also have a, a, a balanced a uh, weapon, a balanced sp uh, spell um, damage, and also a balanced defense rating. So take this build as an example. If you check my inventory, I'm using the Gutting Blade. This Gutting Blade is part of the Tiger of Jiang Dong set, correct? However, as you can see, for the rest of my gear, I'm actually using pieces of Cursed Star of Aegean uh, armor, which is part of the Yuan's head senior general. However, my wrists are again part of the Tiger of Jiangdong set. So here's the thing. First of all, I think it is important when you are putting your build together, if you can, farm a bow or a crossbow that has the set bonus requirement mitigation this will allow you to when you put your pieces of your uh, armor sets together you can actually leave one of those pieces out and you will benefit from the entire set so in this case i'm using the cursed star of Ajan helmet the armor the chest piece and the greaves I'm also using the weapon as secondary weapon. But if you take a look at the requirements, I am benefiting from all of the bonuses, but I am actually missing the gauntlets because I've got the set bonus mitigation with the crossbow. So this allows me to use a secondary set, so to speak. For example, the Tiger of Jiang Dong, as I explained, and I'm benefiting from two bonuses, the Spirit Sustainability and the Spirit Gain from Deflecting, by having two pieces equipped instead of the three that would be required to have two bonuses activated. So, as you can see, I'm using uh, a, curved, um, a curved saber and for both my, my weapons, but my number one app weapon is the Gutting Blade. Now, let's take a look at the Gutting Blade. This Gutting Blade has an attack bonus that, as you can see, right here in this section, has a scaling of A- with fire, A- with metal, and C- with water. So, if you are planning to get the, the best out of this weapon, when you put your virtues together, you want to make sure that you prioritize metal at first, you also prioritize fire as secondary. And last, you can put some points into water and that will also boost the damage of this weapon a little bit. 
not much because the scaling is C minus. The biggest part of the damage is going to come from the metal and from the fire combination. So if I show uh, the character itself, you can see I've got 40 points in fire and I've got 90 points in metal. This automatically gives the best scaling possible for this specific weapon. I could also add up some points into water, as I explained, but considering the leveling system that is currently in place, you can only level up so much, up to level 150. Now, another thing you have to consider here is the, the equipment weight. So if I go onto this side, this armor set I'm using is a medium weight. And in this case, it giving, it's giving me, with the current levels I've got, with 20 points in Earth, it's giving me Agility B. Agility affects a few things in-game. So, as you can see by the description, it defines Agility as how light you are on your feet. This varies depending on the weight of your gear. The greater your Agility is, the less Spirit is spent on Martial Arts, Deflecting and dodging also become easier. So if you have agility A, you are very good to go. Everything will go nice and smoothly. If you have agility B, it's not too bad, but it's not as easy. Everything that comes after agility B, so C and D, I wouldn't even go there. Just, just it's not an option, uh, I would say. And this applies for both PvE and PvP. I wouldn't go anywhere above B. Stay A if you can, or B if you can't go uh, A. In this case, because my build is focused, um, as I explained, on the fire and metal virtues, uh, that doesn't really help with the equipment weight. That comes from the earth virtue. I have 20 points on earth virtue, mainly because I want to use the spell Lion Roar. This spell gives a boost onto your defense, and also, as everybody knows by now, it's a bit broken at the moment, it prevents any fatal strike damage. That's not the real reason why I use it, I use it mainly because it, it, um, it will give me the defense boost I just mentioned, but also, as you can read by the description, lets out a shout that generates a shockwave. Enemies hit will be forced to lock onto you. So enemies hit is where I have to highlight the importance of using this spell. When you are playing PvE and PvP, if you get close enough to your enemies and you activate Lion's Roar, they take a tiny bit of damage, but that little tiny bit of damage will trigger something that is currently on one of my pieces of gear on the special effects, which is power gain upon wizardry spell, so this will increase your attack, and power drop on enemy upon wizardry spell. So this decreases the attack uh, that they do onto you. They will decrease the damage that the enemies do onto you. So you will be doing more damage, and you will be receiving less damage. So this, as you can see, the, those spells put together, those, those, these little things put together will benefit you on the long run. Now back to the gear. If you are considering such a, a thing like I did for this build, I wanted to use a curved saber. So I went checking through all the available pieces of gear, what would be the best option for a curved saber build. And that's when the Ewan's Head Senior General uh, armor set comes into place. This will give you a spirit gain from normal attacks, deflect spirit consumption, spirit fervor upon deflection, and, most importantly, curved saber damage. So, this set will give you curved saber damage 8.1% increase. Now, when you have a set does, that does this sort of thing, when you then are going to um, embed your pieces of gear, you have to think uh, ahead and plan. So if my gear is increasing my saber damage, what kind of uh, embedments should I have on the weapons themselves? And this answers your question. Curved saber damage. Because you will be increasing that same damage even further. The higher the percentage you get in total, the bigger the benefit. And on the secondary weapon, you can use the same, Curved Saber Damage. Now, 
Another thing I want to mention here is the spells. As you can see, I'm using the Venom Snare and I'm using the Bursting Fireball. Now, you might imagine that the higher you have on Metal Virtue, the more damage your poison is going to do. Not exactly. Not on this game. That sort of scaling happens in games like Dark Souls. The higher your intelligence, for example, the higher damage your sorceries will do. In Wulong Fallen, Wulong Fallen Dynasty, that is not the case. Your um, Venom, for example, your Venom Snare, will do more damage considering things such as this. Toxin attack power or toxin damage. In this case, because you can only have one red slotted uh, embedment on each one of your pieces of gear. If I am using the curved saber damage here, I cannot, use, I cannot have a second one with a damage bonus. But what I can have is toxin attack power. This toxin attack power, if you have it on every single piece of your gear, as I do, if you check out, right? Toxin attack power, toxin attack power, toxin attack power, toxin attack power, toxin attack power. Sometimes, if I find the right accessory that also allows me to do that, that's even great. Take a look at this one, for example. Toxin attack power. And not only gives me toxic attack power, but it also increases the damage dealt. So all these things put together, the, the poison itself is going to do a significant a more uh, bigger amount of damage compared to if you had none of these things on your armor. Another thing you have to consider here is you might use the poison, but if you don't have uh, boosts such as this, poison accumulation on enemies, the poison might not immediately get your enemies poisoned. They just get the hit, but they don't really get poisoned. So you need the, a high amount of poison accumulation on enemies. If you take a look again on my gear, on the weapons this cannot be applied, but on the gear pieces such as the armor you can. So my head, chest, gauntlets and greaves, they all have poison accumulation. Now, for the greaves, gauntlets and the chest, you also see that I have burn accumulation and flame attack power. The reason for this is because of the bursting fireball. The damage of my fire spells is going to be increased by the, top, the flame attack power on my pieces of gear and the burning accumulation on the enemy is going to be um, easier and it will proc faster because on almost all my armor pieces I have the burns accumulation on enemies. The only exception here, in this case, is the headpiece, because I have decided to apply power gain upon wizardry spell. So, as I explained before, when I showcased um, the special effects here, the power gain upon wizardry spell comes from that helmet. Uh, that's where the benefit comes from right here, power gain upon wizardry spell. So if you are using wizardry spells, you can have this bonus on your armor. Now, this power gain is not exceptional for, it's, it doesn't apply only to your spells, it applies to your melee damage as well. So it's a nice boost to have, it helps you on the long run. Now, other things you would like to consider here, for example, is on this specific piece of uh, accessory, I have HP restoration from melee attack damage, A-. minus. So, you are not going to recover a lot of HP per hit. You recover about 1 HP point uh, per hit, which is not a lot. But, if you are constantly hitting your enemies, you are constantly healing yourself. So that, that will save you some of the precious dragon's cure pots, both for PvE and for PvP. One thing I would also like to mention, for this specific build, uh, if you take a notice on my secondary um, bow, it's part of the grace of Zhuangshu, the Black Emperor. If I move on to the sets, uh, set bonus, this gives me deflect spirit consumption reduction, reduction. Now, it doesn't give me a massive boost, it's only 2.5%, but if you take notice here, this part of the set, the second bonus, also gives me a deflect speed consumption reduction of minus 2.1. And also, uh, sometimes 
uh, I get, for example, on the accessories, spirit gain from normal attacks, which will help you manage your spirit a bit better. So all these things put together, yes, it's not a massive bonus, but all these little pieces put together, they work together pretty well. Now, another thing I have to mention here is your Divine Beast. When you select a Divine Beast, sometimes you might feel inclined that if I am using um, wood spells, I will choose um, a Divine Beast that reduces the cost of my wood spells. And that might be a good option. But for example, for this specific build, it's not the case. What I want here is the bonuses themselves, spirit damage to enemies with negative effects. So when I cast the Lion Roar, and automatically by casting the Lion Roar close enough, I will apply Power Drop on my enemies. So that is a negative effect. This negative effect will then benefit the first option, spirit damage, uh, dealt to enemies afflicted with negative effects of an, an extra 10.2%. So again, these two bonuses put together, they are helping each other and benefit you to p doing even more damage than you would um, necessarily do if you didn't have these things in place. Also, enemy status effect accumulation of an extra 7.2%. We are using poison. We are using fire. We want the uh, poison accumulation. You want the burns accumulation. This will also help with that. Now, the wizardry spell damage. It's not a massive boost. It's only 4.3%. But, you might ask, could this be increased? And it can. If I quickly show you my uh, Toxic Flames build as an example you will see that I am using the same Divine Beast which gives me Wizardry spell damage of plus 4.3% 4, 4 but then on my pieces of gear um, I have Wizardry spell damage 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 and wizardry spell damage. So if you combine all these percentages, these little 3.2, 3.1, all these little percentages together, if you put them all together, take a look at how much uh, wizardry spell damage I get. 31.6%. This is why the poison with this build is overpowered because it was designed to be so. Also, take a look at my weapons. Toxic damage, 3.5%. 3.5%. So, again, I am increasing the damage of the poison. Now, take another look here. Toxin, atta toxin attack power. Flame attack power. Toxin attack power. Flame attack, flame attack power. On all my pieces of gear, there is the flame and there is the toxic. So, all these things put together, how much do I get? 112 flame attack power, 114 toxin attack power. So this will boost the damage of my poison and my fire even further to a whole new level. Now take a look, another look at this. Elemental damage, 3.0%. Fire and toxin are elements, another boost to the damage. And then take a look at this one. Damage dealt, 2.1% another increase of this damage so you combine all these numbers together and that's what makes my poison overpower so the poison spell on its own if you use it in a build that makes absolutely no sense you might have 40 powers you might have 40 levels i'm sorry um on your virtue uh, on your metal virtue you might have 40 or 85 points in here if you don't have your uh, gear pieces with those little boosts on every single one of them your poison is not going to do that much damage so take a, take all of these things into consideration when you are putting your build together now if i change back to the gear i was showcasing uh, previously i just want to mention a couple more things this build is an example and as i said this build was designed around making the most out of the curved saber now when i went to choose a curved saber i decided to choose the gutting blade what's the best thing about the gutting blade is that it scales with fire and metal so this allows me to use my favorite spells in the game poison 
and fire. So on my pieces of gear, as I said, flame attack power and toxin attack power. So all these things combined, this build does a significant amount of damage. It's not overpowered. Uh, my, my fatal strikes will not one shot you and my poison will not kill you straight away. But it will do a good enough uh, piece of damage. Now, this weapon here, as you can see, it has an attack power of 549. Why is that? Because the scaling is reversed, as you can see. And also, it's only at plus 8. That's also truth. But take a look of the, of, of the scaling. This one scales A plus with metal, A minus with fire. This one, if I was to upgrade it to plus 9, it would scale A plus with fire and A minus with metal. So it will always do a, signif a, a little bit less damage than the main weapon. So, again, all these things put together, you get the best out of, of your gear pieces and you can get the best build possible focused not only on your weapon, but on the spells that you will uh, you be using uh, while using that specific weapon. Now, as I said, this is an example of a build. You can do this with any build. You choose the armor set that you want to use, and then you build around it. The best thing for me to do for this is, again, I will quickly show another build for you to understand what I'm talking about. So, in this case here, for example... Uh, where was it? This one here. The fire subtlety uh, build. Now, if I showcase what I'm using here, take a look at the at the virtues. I've got 44 on wood, 99 on fire. The nine points on earth is simply so I can get agility nine with 30% proportion. That's the only reason. Now, everything else I ditched on fire, primarily, and secondarily on wood. Now, let's take a look at the stats of the weapons. This weapon scales A plus with wood and A minus with fire. If this scaling was reversed, I would get even more attack power than the 661 you can see up there. Now, this one scales A plus, uh, A and B plus because it's at 8 plus 8. If I was going to fully upgrade it to plus 9, it would scale A plus and A minus with fire. Now, the most important uh, piece of uh, the, the real reason why I do uh, have 99 on fire is this set that I'm using. I'm using the subtlety of fire, which will give me all these bonus spirit gain from normal attacks reduce spirit consumption uh, of fire uh, phase spells, martial arts spirit consumption reduction, berserker might um, upon a successful deflection, and the subtlety of fire phase. This requires a virtue of 70 or greater, and when you hit an enemy with the martial arts, you will gain up to 5 stacks of subtlety of fire phase. Each stack increases HP damage dealt with martial arts. So basically the idea is spam martial arts. That's it. That's the simple idea of this build. There's not a lot to it. And I have made a build, a detailed video about this build as well that you can check. Now, when you are engaging with PvE and PvP, I want you to take notice of something here. If I go on to my stats, this build has... A defense of 473 it's very squishy so I take significant amounts of damage here if I go back to the previous build that I showed on the battle preparation we change one to the battle sets and we go back to the curved saber and if I go to the stats you'll see I have 608 I have 608 and if you take a look at my armor it's all at plus 8 it has not been upgraded to plus 9 just yet. Okay? And again, it gives me a nice number of 608. Now, consider this. If you are fighting bosses, if you are fighting little enemies, if you are fighting in PvP, your defense is what keeps you alive. The higher your defense, the more it, uh, hits you can probably take. Now, this is the reason why I created this build. My defense is not overpowered, my attack is not overpowered, my spells are not overpowered, 
but they are all put together in a balance that allows for a good build creation example. And that's the reason why I made this build, um, so I could make a little bit of a different video, giving a bit more detail on how to create your builds. So, with, with this build, what I'm trying to tell you guys, for those who follow the channel, is don't simply look at the gear pieces and put random stuff together. You will not take the you will not make the best out of it. So try to combine all the pieces of gear that you can for the ultimate uh, power of your own build. Are you going to focus on spells? Then try to get wizardry spell damage on your pieces of gear. Are you going to focus on melee damage? Maybe focus put put uh, embedments that focus on melee attack damage. Are you going to try to do a little bit of both, use spells and use melee attacks? Then maybe, instead of going to those previous two options, just use damage dealt. In general, it will boost both, both worlds. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. I know it's a bit of an unusual thing, but I think it was about time that instead of just showcasing another build, I would guide you into making your own build the best way possible. The, uh, refining it to the detail to get the best out of it. Now, you might consider one last thing which I would like to give as, example, as an example. If you are going to uh, maybe engage in PvP and you are fighting experienced players, you might have to adapt the embedments on your pieces of gear. If you do have to do so, always consider amongst all of these special effects which is the one that i require the less for ex i will use this helmet as an example if i had to change something i would probably change the poison accumulation on enemies now if i had to change something on this one i would probably change the burns accumulation on enemies always prioritize what you have to change to fit the scenario you are into and that's the best advice I can give you, uh, according to whatever player you are fighting um, and what, whatever enemies you are choosing to engage with. I hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. This is actually the end. If you uh, have made it this far, please leave a like. It's very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please consider doing so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And I, I wish you a very pleasant uh, time. Cheerio!